Well, Sean Horler and Steve J. Adams, it's good to see you guys in person. You were on our show a couple of years ago for your last film, Someone Like Me, and now you're here for Satan Wants You. Uh, really excited to talk to you. Before we get into it, let's just show a clip from the trailer. This is a clip from uh, Satan Wants You. Joining me now from Victoria is Michelle Smith, a one-time victim of abuse by a satanic cult, and Dr. Lawrence Pazder, the psychiatrist who helped her come to terms with that nightmare. The book is called Michelle Remembers. Michelle Remembers. We wrote it together. We wrote it together. The first publicized account of such rituals. They would put me in cages, sacrifice animals, eating feces and orgies and dismembering fetuses. These were things that you experienced. That's right. Who are these people? Well, they're a secret organization. They're a secret society. When that book came out, I mean, all hell broke loose. It was a theory that there's a satanic conspiracy and there are children who are kidnapped, stolen, and sacrificed. It's known as the satanic panic from the 1980s and 90s. Uh, Sean and Steve, whew, uh, that's just a little bit of the documentary, but in the trailer, it mentioned a book uh, called Michelle Remembers. Can you tell us about that book, Michelle Remembers, Sean? Yeah, I mean, I, I grew up in Victoria, so Michelle Remembers is by two authors from Victoria. It is set in Victoria. Um, for me, I mean, my family moved there right after the book was published while the satanic panic was unfolding. And they were everywhere, Michelle and Larry. They were on TV, they were on the radio, they are in the newspapers. It was this story that everyone knew about in Victoria. Mm -hmm. And like layer upon layer upon layer of us too, right? Like stores downtown had satanic altars in the back and you had to look out for these people in black <laughs> and don't go to the cemetery at night. And What was it like to grow up in that environment as a kid? Scary, yeah. right? And and this, I mean, for me too, the, the thing about this is like, you know, it's how many 40 years later so it's like you forget about all of this stuff until this came back into our life mm -hmm. and i had no idea as a kid like you sort of you're like oh yeah they're connected to the satanic panic but i had no idea that this story touched millions and millions of people around the world mm -hmm. sean could you just tell us a little bit about who michelle smith and lawrence pazder were uh, Michelle Smith was a young woman in Victoria in the 70s uh, who started seeing her psychiatrist, Dr. Lawrence Pazer, who everyone refers to as Larry, uh, when she had a bad dream after a miscarriage. And this is sort of like the genesis for this book. They go into therapy, they, and it goes from like, you know, once a week to every day for eight hours at a time. And then as they start going deeper and deeper into therapy, more and more memories start are, are being recovered from Michelle about this terrible abuse she suffered at the hands of a satanic cult when she was five years old in Victoria, BC. And Larry actually recorded those sessions. He recorded them. There was actually video as well, which apparently was burnt, but we got Ooh. one of the tapes anonymously, one of the therapy tapes that no one has ever heard is in the film. Wow, that was video? He recorded everything. He was like, like he, he wanted to be famous, didn't he? One hundred percent. Didn't yeah. he learn anything from Nixon? Like, <laughs> don't don't leave it. Don't don't, <laughs> don't uh, like tell on yourself like that, man. <laughs> he wanted to be famous, though. Like he wanted to be known. Yeah, yeah. I guess so. Yeah. Steve, if, for people who may not remember this, the Satanic Panic. It was in the eighties and nineties. What exactly happened? What was it about? <laughs> it was a lot of just like wild accusations of people who were. Uh, basically like taking children and sacrificing them. That was like the main thorough thread of what the satanic panic was. Uh, many people uh, were definitely accused of it. It happened through daycare centers, anywhere where people really had like uh, contact with children is where you seem to see a lot of these cases begin to erupt. Um, well, like a lot of the people, I have to just say this too, mm -hmm. right? Like if, if you were at all different in the 80s, this is something that you could have been accused of. Like, mm -hmm. so we're, I mean, we're both queer men. Mm -hmm. So many of the people who went on trial in a lot of these daycare cases were queer, mm -hmm. right? Or a single woman in her 20s who wasn't married. You know, like these people who are not just part of the mainstream culture mm -hmm. and that sort of like normal let's just say American family life, like you could have faced this accusation. How do you defend yourself? Yeah, and right? Steve, you know, when Colin asked you that question, you kind of laughed. And I think you laugh because <laughs> it's, when we hear satanic panic now in the framework of like 2023, 
it's kind of like, that's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But when we watch the documentary, and like you mentioned, people's lives were impacted to the point where people ended up in jail, losing their jobs, losing their livelihood. Mm -hmm. So looking at it from like a 2023 uh, viewpoint, how did people not know that this was kind of like we needed to ask more questions? I, I think the questions were being asked. Um, I, I think you had media that was perpetuating what what was like thought to be happening. Um, Valerie Pringle, who is like one of like Canada's like- Very serious journalist. Right? Yeah. Um, she's on air asking Michelle if she was eating feces. Like it was very, and like it was like the new newscast. Like it was very, like it was all over the place. And it just, I don't know, like you had law enforcement who were participating, you just had all these authority figures within our, our society that were saying, this is happening, this is true. And so everybody just, how can you, how can you deny that, right? Yeah, they were, they were, I think, police officers who sp were specifically, like, like, that was their beat, in mm -hmm. a way. Like, they were oh. occult specialists, which it just sounds kind of wild to think about it now, but that's what they were actually assigned to do, right? It's like, it's like an X-Files episode. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> Cops I mean, for Christ. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cops for Christ. <laughs> Can you talk about what their families were going through while they were uh, on tour with this book? You know, I mean, this is like for us, you know, there's several ways to approach a doc, right? Mm -hmm. So like we started with the book, that's sort of where you start. And then you expand out from that to sort of talk to all the other people who are around that. Mm -hmm. We, when we started reaching out to the family and also doing our research and realizing that, you know, we can't find any interviews with a single family member who at that time came out and said, no, this is, you know, this is my version of this and it's not correct at all. So for us, it's like reaching out to Larry's uh, first ex or first wife, ex-wife, his daughter, uh, Michelle's sister, Michelle's best friend. This was a like new territory, brand new territory for a doc, which is so exciting. And also like, it was so important for us knowing how big this book was and how far it spread and how much media it gained for 15 years, 20 years, and people still talk about it today, mm -hmm. to have these family members and and get that story and create a platform for them to actually be like, this is the truth. Mm. Well, Blanche, Blanche Barton says it, right? In, mm -hmm. the, in the doc, when she's talking about the, the talk shows and the people that come on and it's all the people who are victims. Mm -hmm. And she just says like, why, why didn't they bring out the family members? Why didn't the family members ever come on stage and actually say like, hold them to account? Because mm -hmm. um, it would make for bad TV. However, <laughs> it makes for a great documentary. So. <laughs> and were they excited to finally talk to you, to someone about this? Oh, yeah. I mean, when we, you know, it's a little nervous to doing this, knowing that there, there, there is a lot of trauma to mm -hmm. this film as well, right? For them, for the other victims of the satanic panic, it's like you laugh because it's, you know, satanic panic, but there's also a real serious side to this. Mm -hmm. And when we called uh, Larry's ex-wife, uh, Mary Lynn, for the first time, I mean, that was nerve wracking. And the funny thing is, like, just said, hey, listen, listen we're going to do it. We want to do a film and we want to talk to you. An hour long. She, it was like 40 years hadn't passed at all. She had all the stories and was just really wanted to talk to us. Mm -hmm. Well, how did you approach that? Because you mentioned that people hadn't spoken to them. So, um, Steve, like when you call them up, how, what do you say to them to say, uh, to get them to trust you to, you know, you mentioned it's very traumatic. How do you get them to open up and trust the process that you're do, trying to do? I think with uh, a lot of the people that actually participated in the doc, we, we contacted, uh, of course, like a, 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 like other people um, that were close family members. Um, and it's just kind of you're testing the waters, right? Mm -hmm. you're, you're seeing who wants to talk, who who feels like they, they have something to say. And uh, like with Marilyn, she's helped like multiple investigators. Mm -hmm. um, she's kept binders full of just everything, like newspaper articles, anything to do with her divorce. Um, just She like, recorded one of the bishops, I think. She recorded everything. Yeah. She, she was like. She, she was savvy. She was really good. <laughs> like yeah. spy thriller. Yeah. Stuff, yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, and so really it was just like the, the path of least resistance for us mm -hmm. um, and who felt like they they wanted to, to stand up on the stage and do it and that's kind of like the, the path that we took. Also helped that I was from Victoria for mm -hmm. a lot of, because I mean a lot of the story is set there and especially for the family it's a shared experience that at least I have some understanding, you know, not at all to the level that they went through but mm -hmm. at least what the city is like and what actually happened there. Were you kind of surprised that this started in Victoria in Canada. I mean, this went on to become very influential, especially in the United States. They even met the Pope. Well, yeah, and they met the Pope, exactly. I yeah. mean, 
This yeah. all started in Victoria, BC. Yes, I was surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Victoria's so snoozy. It's not that <laughs> kind of city. Yeah, it's, it's not that kind of city. So yeah. I guess because I don't really think, I don't know, I guess we don't associate Canadians with ever having that kind of like influence on the global stage like that, except for maybe hockey, but. You know, I mean, one of the claims and Michelle remembers, of course, is that Victoria was one of the satanic capitals of the world, oh, right? Victoria yes. and Geneva, Switzerland. And that was for a time in the eighties. That's what some people thought. So. Mm. And so it just, it, doesn't that kind of make it so, you know, like people are like, Victoria is the capital of Satanism. And it's like, it just makes it like that much more believable because it's just not believable at all. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it, it felt like that kind of had a, a play happening. Mm. I appreciated the fact that you um, let the viewer kind of make up their mind on what's happening. Who would you say whose fault it was ultimately this happened? That's tricky. Satan, obviously. Right? <laughs> I mean, those are the traits of the devil, right? I mean, greed, influence, power. <laughs> I think that there's just, there was so many different, like, social changes that were happening at the time. Um, like, religion was much more popular. It was much more through the culture. And they had a book that just dropped at the right time. And it kind of just, it, it clicked. And so trying to pace, uh, place blame on people, I find it really tricky. It's, mm -hmm. it's also hard, though, because it's almost like everyone's responsible. I mean, it's like, the, a, a, the two authors, plus the institutions, plus the church, plus the media for per for participating, mm -hmm. plus people who didn't speak up and say, you know, th th for me in our film, one of the takeaways is that moment when the Wiccan uh, police detective, Charles Ennis, uh, finally says, you know, like we basically all have a responsibility to stand up and say, this is a lie. And even if it, you know, you can't just say it once, you have to say it over and over and over again until, mm -hmm. you know, it, it everyone realizes it is a lie. Mm -hmm. But nobody realizes it. I'm hopeful. <laughs> yeah. I'm hopeful. Do any of the people, though, who are kind of like promoting this idea of, of, a sat of Satan, like satanic ritual abuse, like the, the journalists at the time, like the media figures, like, you know, Maury Povich was around, do, was popular at this time. Geraldo, Oprah, do, I mean, I don't know. Do any of them have ever, have any of them ever come out and said, yeah, we, may, we messed up here. This was not like credible at all and we should have done a better job. Geraldo did give an apology. So, I mean, he, you'll see in the film, there is, he did one very notorious show that influenced, you know, according to the sociologist. It's like a three parter, right? Yeah. Yep. That the sociologist that we spoke to said, you know, this spread this to, you know, from just being sort of a rumor into 12 million households or 40 million households in the US suddenly were like, oh my God, there's Satanists everywhere. Mm -hmm. Like he played a big role in that, but he did apologize in the 90s, mm -hmm. which is something. Mm -hmm. I mean, because people were really hurt by this. Um, you mentioned, um, um, daycare. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a woman by the name of Margaret Kelly Michaels. What happened to her? Hi. Um, she again. She was working in a school um, with young children, and a parent had accused her. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and it went on to be a, a super long trial. She went to prison for five years. Mm -hmm. um, she was accused of, of heinous stuff, and like. Basically, she was tarred and feathered. She's had to carry that around with her for the rest of her life. And her life has kind of been ruined by it. Like it, it's these types of accusations, like when people are calling other people or accusing them of being pedophiles, um, it really like it ruins your reputation and it can ruin your life. And Kelly Michaels definitely has, has felt that. And we should say, I mean, these cases are still being brought to justice, these false accusations. The film premiered in, at South by Southwest mm -hmm. in Austin, Texas. And there is a case literally right now that is unfolding for a man who has been, you know, this is like 30 or 40 years of his life. And they're saying, no, this is not true now. Right. Like it's not just something from the distant past either. Right. These people are still alive. There's still people in prison. And furthermore, you know, it's like easy to be like, ah, oh, this is just the 80s and 90s. This is happening right now. I mean, in what ways? In, in the, through QAnon and Pizzagate. So that's sort of the most recent iteration, mm -hmm. those satanic cult conspiracies now involving political figures and Hollywood actors drinking the blood of children to get adrenochrome or whatever the chem magical chemical is, right, in the basements of pizzerias and all that stuff in the U.S. And for us, I mean, this film... Just this past week, there was an article, I think, in the Epoch Times. Mm. Did I say that right? I don't I think, think I so, did. Yeah. Yeah, did I? Mm -hmm. E P O C H, right. yeah, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, that basically there is a satanic ritual abuse survivor talking and saying, referencing our film and saying, no, I'm actually a victim of satanic ritual abuse. Mm. And this is 2023, right? 
So it's it is kind of scary. Like this is something. I, I was looking for therapists. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Last week, and I, I found a woman downtown Vancouver, and one of the things that she treated was ritual abuse. I was like, like people are still. They're, they're still treating this like it, it's still like it's still within society right now. Like it, it was wild. You know, we're repeating the mistakes of the past now because a lot of people believe QAnon and mm -hmm. Pizzagate. People have been actually harmed by these these theories. This is I mean, this for us, this is another <laughs> like layer to this film. I mean, mm -hmm. what does it mean to be human and why do we believe in things even when there's no basis or concrete evidence or no basis in reality, right? And and those and this whole thing about storytelling, constructing reality is definitely an element to this story too. And all the different ways storytelling works, right? Mm -hmm. Like you share information with a story, you educate somebody, but you know, if you don't like somebody, you can also make up a story to ruin their life and their, you know, like storytelling is great, it's terrible, it's part of being human. Mm -hmm. It, it truly, like when we can't explain the things around us that are happening in our life, the easiest thing to fall back on is a lot of the time Satan, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it's just, a, it's part of who we are. The the big thing that we saw was like, it happened once, it's happening again, and it's probably going to happen in the future. You yeah. mentioned, you mentioned though that, you know, when the, I guess the first satanic panic of the 80s and 90s, when that was going on, there was a lot of social changes happening. I think it was more visibility about uh, LGBTQ folks for, folks, for example. Mm -hmm. And I think even now we're seeing Seeing, you know more visibility of like trans mm -hmm. individuals and LGBTQ folks are also you know getting more acceptance right um, and I wonder if that's playing a role just that you know the, the, the more these more we're seeing changes to like gender ideas around gender and race um, if that's somewhat maybe ha having a, having a role in um, getting people to go down these kind of dark paths like a, like QAnon and that sort of thing well, definitely. I mean, typically those are the people who have the devil in them, right? Right, yeah. You know, and then I think technology too is also another factor in this, right? Like a daytime TV, talk TV was the thing in the 80s and 90s that spread this everywhere. You know, Facebook, Twitter, social media did it for QAnon and Pizzagate. And Steve and I always talk now that we're AI is, you know, we're right oh, at the God. cusp of it. <laughs> yeah. Like, what is going to happen? Coming in hot. <laughs> we were just watching a video actually before we started of an AI created political mm -hmm. commercial. Yeah. No. And it looks real, like 100% real. real. Yeah. For the Republican Party. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, you didn't know exactly what I was talking yeah. about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's scary. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you mentioned like when I was watching the documentary, because we we're talking about Satan, mm -hmm. there's an, an actual church of Satan. Mm -hmm. What is that? Because I didn't know what it was until I watched the documentary. The Church of Satan is uh, like when you when they try to distill it down, it's basically instead of following these rules like in Christianity of the things you're supposed to be, they just celebrate humans as a whole. So where we're, we have greed, we, we have all of these kind of things that are considered negative um, parts of our lives, but the, the Church of Satan looks at humans as as a whole person, as a whole thing, and that's they, they want to celebrate that. Yeah, and what I love is, so we have a, a former high priestess of the Church of Satan, Blanche Barton, uh, as one of the uh, participants in the film, and she says, you know, basically Satanism is not a tolerance of your differences. Mm -hmm. It's a celebration of differences, right? It's like we celebrate how different everyone is, and I thought that was such a like, oh, who doesn't want to be part of that? And it's very, a to it's yeah. a complete opposite of what we've come to know as Satan, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I thought it was really interesting that insurance companies played a role in Michelle Remembers. Do you want to go down that? Like, can you <laughs> explain to us how that happened? Because I was like, of course. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Money's involved. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's it's an interesting thing, like both in Canada, the U.S., the U.K., this happened, right? So it's like, you know, especially in Canada and the U.K. where there is pub like, what's the word I'm looking for? Healthcare, mm -hmm. obviously, uh, where doctors are billing the hour, like the government in the U.S. is different too, but every, these doctors are billing and they're bringing you in for like seven sessions a week for hours or maybe eight hours a day and billing for it. And then mm -hmm. the insurance companies are on the hook for it, right? And they're, they're, we're talking like millions of dollars, like over the course of a year. And so they kind of look at it and they're like, wow, I have one of these patients. Now I can bring in their family members and all of a sudden I'm making like $5 million a year. And so it really turns into a scam. And this had to do with the therapist that were talking to people who were... Mm -hmm having these memories that these awful things that happened to them yep. uh, 
as part of the satanic panic. Yeah, and we, I mean, here in Canada, we should say too, like there, so, you know, Victoria, Michelle remembers, that's one thing. There was a case, like cases in Southern Ontario, Alberta, Saskatchewan, and a really? really big one in Saskatchewan. It's not just a U.S. thing. This happened here too, all at the same time as the U.S., the U.K., Europe, Italy, Brazil, like it's Australia, New Zealand. This was a, a worldwide thing. Mm -hmm. And Larry, I mean, we found one newspaper article. He consulted, it said, close to a thousand cases. A thousand of these cases. That's a lot of money. And yeah. it really seeped into popular culture, right? Because I think, you know, Dungeons and Dragons. Mm -hmm. Music. Gets, yeah, music, heavy metal. I remember an X-Files episode referencing the satanic panic. I mean, how this was really widespread. Like, it really affected the, the public imagination in a lot of ways, didn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it was hard not to. You hear these wild things and your mind can just go wild with it, right? You can think of anything. And it just, it really seeped into all parts of culture at the time. Um, right. Like religious horror was gigantic at the time. It's funny because in the the book, you can actually see references to like the, exor uh, the exorcist and Rosemary's baby, like somebody's head oh, yeah, spinning then, around. You know, halfway through, <laughs> Michelle remembers there's a woman who comes to one of the satanic rituals and her head spins. Like, it's... Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. What's funny about that book is the cover looks so much like a Stephen King novel. Mm -hmm. Right? You know? Like Misery. Yeah. Yeah, or, yeah any, like Pet Cemetery, one of those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think something that, that struck me is that people are believing this, like, satanic ritual abuse is happening. You know, millions of children are being abducted. But at the same time, uh, you know, we learn in the, I guess, the early aughts that the Catholic Church uh, has been, you know, it, there's a huge uh, sex abuse scandal with children and priests, and they're they're covering it up. Women, uh, for years, were not believed if they came forward with sexual assault. But people would believe in sa Satanism. Like, it's mm -hmm. just, it's it's ironic, right? Like, mm -hmm. why <laughs> why do we go to this extreme thing and not the most logical thing? It's weird. I mean, we've talked about that a lot, right? Like it was like they were basically pointing their fingers saying like, look over there, look over there, while it was actually the church that was doing all the things that they said that everybody else was doing. Like it was like really crazy when you actually like look at it from that. It's interesting. I mean, in Austin at South by Southwest, we had a, an indigenous journalist actually in the audience for our world premiere. Mm -hmm. And it was the final question of the night. And he just started, you know, talking about residential schools and the Catholic Church, and that was a connection that we hadn't made. But this was literally the Catholic Church stealing children and abusing them, and then neglecting them to the point of death. Right? Like this. This is what the Satanists were accused of. But it was happening for sure <laughs> within the church. It yeah. was just well, yeah. tell us, well, since we talked about that, um, we mentioned that Michelle and Larry was he a psychiatrist or uh, psychologist? A uh, psychiatrist. Psychiatrist. Um, they actually met the Pope. What was in it for the church to pro to be a part of this uh, book and this, what was happening with uh, Michelle Remembers? I mean, it just got more people into the pews, right? Yeah. <laughs> and one of the priests, I know, it's, you know, thought he was going to make a million dollars, you know? Like, they, 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 they saw this as actual, like, a bestseller, like Jaws, right? Their editor in, in New York uh, actually was the editor for Jaws. So it's like all you see, you dig into this and that wasn't in the movie, but it was just, there's so many layers to the story that you can't yeah. even fit it into 90 minutes, you know? That was the main thing. Uh, so many people just came up to us and were like, why can't this be a three-parter or four-parter? They just want more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, one of the people that was, well, Michelle wasn't part of it. Did you ask her to be a part of it? Yeah. And she said, uh, she didn't want to participate. We contacted her twice uh, over the course of about six months, um, and she didn't respond to the the first email that we sent. And then uh, six months later, she did respond, and she said she doesn't want to participate, which I understand. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's been – I think it's a it's a weird part of your life to, to dive back into, and especially if she doesn't want to recant or, mm -hmm. like, you know, if she – What would you have asked her? Oh, God. Uh, I would have asked her – like, literally, I just wanted – like this, at least in my head, was to create a space for her to tell her side of the story. Like the last piece of, last interview that we could find of them actually talking about this was in 1990. And then after talking to all the family, from what we understand, Michelle has never said, no, this is a lie, or basically, or this is true. Mm -hmm. So it's this gray area where I just would, 
you know, if it wasn't us, maybe there's somebody else who can do it, but just to get what happened to her, you know? Um, and I'm also really curious about how, you know, when you start something and you end it, um, from your point of view as uh, people who were telling these story, what did you learn at the end that you didn't know going in when you decided to make this project? For me, I just didn't understand how widespread it was. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't understand the satanic panic. I'm 40, uh, 42, uh, so I like grew up through the 80s, uh, and I, I didn't, I just didn't know. I didn't know how many lives it touched. It touched. I didn't know how widespread it was. It was just one of those things that you you look at it and you're like, wow, just had no idea. Mm -hmm. And it's like not that far away. Mm. If if there's one, I guess like takeaway you want people to have from watching this film. What is it? I'm thinking and I'm thinking in the context of like we've talked about with QAnon and and these kind of, you know, conspiracy theories. I mean, Trump's still talking about losing the election. People are really like still are susceptible to this this sort of thinking. So I guess I don't know, what do you is there any like thing that we can do to I guess convince people not to go down these kind of rabbit holes? You know, I personally come from a really cynical, skeptical family. So like there's a couple characters in the film that I think people can learn a lot from the FBI, FBI agent, uh, Ken Lanning and the investigative journalist, Debbie Nathan. I think everyone needs some more skepticism in their lives. Ask people questions, ask why, right? And also take the time to think about rumors when you hear them <laughs> instead of just jumping on the bandwagon and riding off in the sunset. So. Yeah. It's really tricky though. There's so many influences in our lives, um, and I think it's really hard to to kind of navigate through and and figure out what's real and what's not real. Um, and I think just as we go into the future, it's going to get uh, harder and harder. Well, it's a terrific documentary. How I started it is not where I ended, and then I still had a lot more questions. So yes, maybe another two-parter. <laughs> <laughs> um, but where can people find the documentary? Do you have plans for distribution? We do. Uh, we're going to be playing hot dogs uh, right now. Uh, we're finishing our festival run uh, through spring, and then we'll be doing our theatrical run in August, and it'll be available ready for streaming. on CBC uh, starting this fall with a, a date to be announced. So you can look for like SatanWantsYouFilm.com. We have all the dates if it might be playing at a film festival in your city or your region. And also on Instagram, if you want to see all the satanic stuff, follow us on Instagram. Awesome. Congratulations. Sean and Steve. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us today. This was great. Yeah, yeah thanks, thanks for, having, for us. having us. Thank you.